Rich Shea here, unboxing Merv, The Heart of the Silk Road, designed by Fabio Lopiano and published by Osprey Games and extremely colorfully illustrated by Ian O'Toole. So, I ordered this game based mostly on the mechanics and some of the reviews and I got a chance to play it at Origins before I actually got a copy, open my copy and go through it. So I'm a little familiar with the game now. So let's go through this. As you can see, this game has a lot of color. It also has a lot of mechanisms. So let's start with the rule book on top. Let's get this centered a little bit so you can see. Okay, it's uh, plenty of spaced out stuff. Uh, review of the components, walls, gates, year marker, buildings, discs, camels. Camels are important. Resources, um, servant meeples and master meeples. Caravan cards where you collect, it's a set collection mechanism for points, okay, and uh, contract cards where you use uh, things that you've acquired to fill contracts for points and a little tiny bonus. Uh, there's a solo version of the game. This is the game board. As you can see, it's extremely colorful and maybe a little confusing. Basically, a score track around the outside, an influence track, not to be confused with a favor track. Over here, let's go to, um, should probably go around the side. The walls go here before they're placed into slots around the city. Okay, there's a caravansary, which is marked over here, but it's going to be a bunch of cards over there. Okay, there's a mosque, there's a track you go up to work on the mosque. Okay, the actual city where potential building spots and the camel market go. Okay, a marketplace for travel along the Silk Road to get rare goods for fulfilling contracts, uh, the three year tracks, and um, the palace. You put people in the palace to use your favor points to score points during the game, and the library where you get scrolls. Sets of scrolls or numbers of scrolls will get you breakthrough cards giving you uh, in-game bonuses or maybe points towards the end. Then there are some things that go on buildings. You can upgrade the buildings in the town a little bit. Um, there are some scoring tiles that let you score bonuses, uh, rewards for getting a certain spot on the mosque based on the types of buildings you have. Then there's a bunch of scrolls and a bunch of goods in two kinds, common and rare. They have different pictures, but they're just really two kinds of goods. Then there's the game setup. It's an even bigger picture of the board where you randomly place out the buildings. You randomly decide which of the two sides of the camel market you're going to use. Um, sort out the contract cards. Players get their stuff. Scrolls come out. The deck of um, caravan cards are shuffled and then a bunch are put out, some of which have camels on them. Camels are important and they do a bunch of things in the uh, in it. And there's some camels over here also uh, in the in the marketplace area, right? Yes. So getting and using camels is part of the game. So playing the game, the action phase, people take a turn. You'll basically move, let's start here, around the city, picking a slot on each side each turn for four, and that makes a year. Okay, so you choose an action slot, you activate one building either in the row or column that you're doing. You'll get resources for that. That's the action you'll get to take based on the building. And you might get some extra resources depending on what other buildings of the same color are in the row or column. You don't have to just use your own buildings. You can use other people's buildings. And they get a little bit of production too if you do that. And late in the game, that's probably a thing to consider. It's You'd love to get more supplies just for you, but there's an action you're going to want to take, and it might be somebody else's card that lets you do it. All right. So you generate resources. The first time you select a slot, spot in the city, if it's empty, you can place a building on it and then activate it at the same time. Then whatever building you select, you do that action. Okay. If you don't want to do that, you can get a favor or deploy a soldier. Those are the suboptimal moves, generally speaking. Okay. Um, if the row has, if the row or column has the camel market, you can spend a camel or take all the camels that are there. When you spend the camel, you might get a 
to do a, a thing then you go around the round ends then you decide turn order the person who's furthest back in the slot they picked has to go furthest back on the next turn unless they want to spend camels to advance their marker and then of course the people who end up with the suboptimal turn get the camels at the end of the second and third year the Mongols invade trying to wreck the place. You can have soldiers or walls to protect your things. Then you score. You score the palace by spending favors and it depends on courtiers you have in there. Okay, um, Buildings score a point. You might have a scoring tile and that will work and the uh, if you've reached all the way in the top of the mosque track you'll get four points for having done that each year probably not going to get there the first year. Okay, It's an example, then you mark the year forward, you'll notice that it has the Mongols, the scoring phase. On the first turn, end of the first year, there's only scoring. The Mongols come out second, third year. So what are the actions? Gain favor. So you move up on the favor track, and then you have to expend the favors to score these. Deploying a soldier uh, you put a soldier on a building, it protects the building from the next Mongol invasion. Then they'll be removed, okay? Uh, also, when you deploy a soldier, you move up on the influence track, which is a separate track, not the favor track. The influence track determines your ability to do certain things and might actually score you points towards the end. The caravansary lets you um, take cards. Uh, so how many cards can you take? Well, when you take the action, you can take you can spend resource cubes. Each resource cube must be the same color or white. For every resource you spend, you can take a caravan card one at a time. So when you take one, if it has a camel, you can just take it and you also get the camel. But if it doesn't have a camel, you can only take the first one that doesn't have a camel. Okay. And the idea is to collect different sets. But the influence track says how many different kinds of cards you can even get. So it's a little complicated. Your, your influence track says how many kinds of cards you can get that time. Okay. And then there are the rules for whether they have camels or the next one after the camel or whether you can even take the card. Your influence determines how many kinds of goods the city allows you to trade in at all. Okay, there's four kinds and you can only trade in one kind till you get to here. Then you can trade in two kinds, three kinds, and then you can trade in everything. And the idea of course is to get each set of everything is worth 10 points, a set of three different things is six, and three and one. So you really want the ability to do that. Okay. Now also when you get a pair, once you get a pair of the same thing, each kind of thing lets you do a bonus when you get your every second one. Okay. Uh, it's a long example. The thing with camels on the cards can be slightly confusing. If you get the game, I advise you to look at that part carefully. On the palace, you move up the, f you place people in here, okay, and there's cost, okay, and it gets more expensive after other people have placed in there, okay, and then the favors are what you let, let you spend to score these. The library gives you a scroll. When you, when you have two scrolls, you can choose one of the level one breakthroughs. You don't spend the scrolls. You always keep them. The scrolls never get returned. On your fourth scroll, you get one of these. On your sixth, one of these. And on your eighth, one of these. Okay. And the library action is taking scrolls. Okay. Um, you can spend up to four resource cube, and they all have to be different. So it's different resource cubes to get up to four scrolls. Okay. The marketplace, you um, you basically you you can collect camels if they're there. But it's mostly about placing your token, maybe using camels to get a good from a space you don't have a token on. So you're trying to build a chain of goods collection in the marketplace. Okay. And the mosque, you build the mosque. As you go up, many of the steps give you some kind of bonus when you take that. 
the first one you get camo if you want to go up the track that has one it starts with a camo for each player so you can always do that but it depends on you might or might not want the track that's going up the wall so the wall are things you build each it gets more expensive as they get used up but a wall like a soldier can protect um, the the buildings in the city but unlike a soldier who protects one building a wall can protect two buildings each way but to protect a building with walls it has to be at the intersection of two walls project protecting it or it has to be on the central row or column and have a gate put there and the gates are the most expensive things to put in place you don't have to buy them in order but clearly you would um, pay the least that you can as you build the walls but you can just jump to building a gate if you can afford it when you building a wall also gives you influence which is good so it's a good thing to do okay At the end of the game you um, do a normal scoring score for sets of uh, caravan cards Okay. and then there's some tiebreakers there's a two-player version they want you to incorporate a dummy player in the single player you have actually two dummy players I believe or maybe you just have the corrupt magistrate okay um, there's a fairly long section on the solitaire play and the end of the game now and more it's, it's quite a beautiful rule book um, and an overview and icon guide on the back showing how the actions relate to the cards and now the components. Let's move this back to the middle. Okay, it, they're extremely colorful. Okay, they're on a sort of medium cards cardboard, not not as heavy as some games. Um, these are the library bonuses that you get. Um, some of them are infinite bonuses. I don't think you can see them here. These are the goods you can get. There's the uh, oops, the camel, the camel market scrolls. Uh, building upgrades these are building upgrades to make them either produce a white which is a wild cube or an extra cube um, you you get those different ways these are the buildings and you can see if I let's bring one up close this one's good this is where you would place your, your cube to, to show ownership this is the action that triggering activating this um, building site does this is what it produces and this is where you would place a soldier. Also, if you upgrade it with this or that, it goes here or the white one just goes over both of them. And the iconography is very detailed, but it's also not hard to distinguish. These are the goods. Um, and I think each of these sheets is very, yeah, similar. There's, uh, you know, more library bonuses. Um, the Scoring bonuses you can earn on the mosque, more scrolls, the brown goods as opposed to the blue goods. Despite all the different pictures, brown goods are just brown goods. Okay. And now the, the board itself, we've seen pictures of it. Um, it's extremely colorful. You would think perhaps it would be like confusing to have all this color and detail, but the reality is that it's it's not. It, it's quite easy to to deal with despite the beautiful colors and all the detail okay the things that are important these get covered up by the buildings so as lovely as it is now it's gone uh, this track this track these tracks this track they're all easy to do the moss track you can see your tokens will move up and the icons on what actually happens are quite straightforward over here the uh, the marketplace area there's a space for tokens it shows you where the camels start the iconography is quite clear, even though it's quite detailed and lovely. Okay, and um, the other components are all um, very nice. Uh, there's a bunch of plastic bags. There's a uh, player aid cards. Um, actually, I think these are for the might be for the solitaire game. I'm not sure why they're in there, but. There, oh, they're a different size. Okay. There's a bag of the components. I don't think we have to take them all out. These are the, the wall components. They're wood. 
they're nice. They're not just boring. They're actually a uh, sloped thing on the top for your soldiers. The uh, gates to go on the, those four spaces with openings. Each player set has um, eight, eight little ordinary servants and yellow and then the, the large ones are here. Those are the player markers that you use on the city along with the year marker. Um, the players have their round wooden pieces for marking things. Each player also has their uh, ten buildings. Uh, there's not lots of them. You don't end up with piles of them because you spend them. The goods cubes, the um, one, two, three, four kinds of goods, which are in distinct sort of pastel colors as opposed to the primary colors of the players. Uh, oh, and the white wild cubes. The blue player, um, yellow, black. And buildings for black and red. Oh, and the camels. And you can see they're pretty detailed. They're thick enough, they stand up easily, and you stand them up usually, and you're not knocking them around because they're, well, thicker than real camels. Um, blue and yellow. So, open the cards. So there's an explanation of each of the actions, how they work, so you can check that out. Um, that's nice for player aid, so you don't have to go back to the rule book all the time. And then, oh, opening the cards. All right. The card deck is super teeny weeny cards, but it's not terribly important. Um, the spices, and it shows the kind of spice, the bonus you get when you have a pair, and the way the scoring works, one, three, six, ten for each set. Uh, cinnamon, ginger, uh, juniper berries, I think, and some other spice, uh, maybe pepper. And also, um, there are varying numbers. There's more cinnamon and many fewer of the I don't know, maybe pepper, whatever that is. Um, only four of those. So it can be tricky that way. Okay. These are contract cards. You 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 spend a thing, you put these on them. You still own the scrolls, you still own the good. Okay. You get um, victory points, a kind of favor. It's usually either this move on that track or place a soldier. But you have to have the ability to do a level one contract, which again, that's on the, um, that sort of prestige track. Here, you need to be there to do a level one favor, level two favors, which are harder to do, but score more points. Uh, level three favors score a lot more, po oh, I forgot to say the other thing. When, when you're doing these, there's a pile. Let's take, I think these three are the same. Level one, scroll, scroll thing. E e yes, okay. Scroll, scroll thing. So, there'll be two contracts. They start like this. The first person to do it gets more points than the second person to do it. Okay, so that's, that's the feature too. So it's a race, a little bit of a race for the contracts. As you can see, there are a lot of things going on in this game. A lot of decisions to make. None of them are really wrong, but some of them are more optimal than others. Um, and you're going to end up ignoring something and feeling bad at the end of the game that you ignored that, but the other players ignored something else, and they're feeling bad that they ignored the thing you did a lot of. Okay, So it's, it's not samey that way. Okay, I, think, I really think that I'm going to enjoy playing this more times as I get it to the table more. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this helps you decide if you're interested in getting this game. It's extremely colorful, okay? And, but surprisingly, the colorfulness, all those details, 
didn't make it harder to play, even in a crowded setting. I was at Origins when I was taught this game, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, and watch for more of my unboxings. Bye for now.